What's going on you guys, Jess from Bikini Designs and in today's episode we're going to be doing a little engraving project um, and we're going to be using the all new Dremel Light, something I'm not very familiar with um, I've not really used it for any engraving projects so it's going to be quite interesting, so let's get into it Alrighty guys, I thought it was quite fitting um, to give myself a little bit of a challenge, seeing that I'm, I'm a seasoned veteran with the Dremel 4300, um, by only using the Dremel light for the entirety of this project today. So yes, I'm a bit apprehensive, but I think we can do it. Um, we've got all the re relevant birds with us, some, I'll share all the information with you guys, so you guys can have the, the same opportunities as what I have here. Um, and Doing little projects like this is a great way of adding a personal touch to something, especially if you've got nice uh, um, occasions coming up like birthdays or Christmases, if you want to add that personal touch, um, it's a good way of doing it. And if you like to zone out in your own little world, this is an awesome way just to uh, get away and escape everything, everyday life, that sort of hustle and bustle and the rat race, um, and just disappear into your own creative world and let those creative juices flow. Um, so yeah. Right, let's show you how to transfer them. Righty, transferring images. Um, there are various methods on how to do this. This is one of the simplest ways to do it. Um, very similar to what tattoo artists use to transfer the images onto your skin. It's the same sort of aspect or the same process we will be using today. So you get yourself some ink transfer paper, get yourself your image that you want to engrave and obviously your material. So your ink transfer paper, we go down, just make sure that it's correct, correctly orientated so that you don't have to draw your image twice. So once you've got your ink transfer paper in position, get your image, lay that over your material, and then from there you can secure it down with either sellotape, um, otherwise it moves around, and you, especially when you're doing a large piece, you don't want anything to move around. Um, so yeah, so once that's nice and secured, all you're going to do now is take a pencil and just basically trace the image. And what you're doing is creating that pressure, transferring the ink from that ink transfer paper onto your material. And what you'll be left with is a very dull um, outline of your, your piece. And then what you can do is use a dark pencil and go over it and you should have something like this. So, now this is obviously a different image. This is something I'm doing for my son um, for Christmas. So we're gonna be doing that. So lots of practice with this sort of method. You can really create really nice images and really refine your lines. There are other ways of transferring images such as laser jet printers. You can just print out your image onto a clear transfer and then just apply that to your material and then just engrave over that if you want to. Pretty simple way to do it and it's a great way of keeping the detail and concentrating on all the detail that you need to capture. Um, for this is quite simple, I like doing it like this um, and it, it's just a nice creative process throughout, keeps that hand moving, nice drawing, um, so yeah, I like kind of do it like that, that way. Righty, burr selection. Now this one can sometimes be a little bit daunting to some people but it, it's pretty simple. Once you get um, going with your, your engraving, it's, you'll soon discover the different textures and the different sizes that your, your burrs, especially when it comes to lines, that each burr um, can offer. So in your kit you generally get about one or two sort of cutting burrs, but you want to have a look um, at your accessory guide that comes with the, the kit itself. And it's a good way of sh um, having a look what's actually available on the market from Dremel. Um, in terms of different sizes, shapes, uh, if you have high speed cutting burrs and they all leave different textures um, which is a great little way of creating variety to your portraits. Um, some of my portraits are, use a lot of different textures to really capture the image and um, really make it pop. So those are the good ways of doing that. So it's not bad sticking with one burr and then just using different techniques to with that single burr and creating different textures. There's nothing wrong with that. So with this particular project, 
um, because there's a lot of fine lines I need to go for a very small burr and this is a 105 cutting burr and then for getting rid of the material out of the uh, project we're going to be using a 9905 a high speed cutting burr and it'll be a good way and it's got a really nice consistent texture from what I found and it's not very aggressive so uh, it is quite a nice cut um, to use Alrighty guys, if you have any questions, let us know below and please share with your projects. I'm always glad to see and very happy to see everybody's projects out there. So let us know, just inbox me or you can hit me up on Instagram or Facebook. Um, and if you have any tips for me, let me know. That'll be awesome. I'm always um, happy to hear from every, all of you guys out there. Right, so what are we waiting for? Let's get straight into this. Let's get it done. Just wait. Just wait. One very important thing to note with engraving materials such as metals. Um, and anything that can fling up towards you. Make sure you get some eye protection, some glasses. Um, if, when you're engraving metals, like such as stainless steels or hard metals, always wear a pair of gloves and get yourself an apron because um, the amount of swarf that comes off the material and then goes into your clothes and gets stuck into your hands like little splinters um, it doesn't give you a very good day afterwards. Um, I've had lots of experience with thousands of little splinters all in my hands. So with hard materials such as steels, uh, make sure you wear a good pair of gloves and especially glasses. Um, but with aluminiums, it's a lot softer. It doesn't really penetrate the skin that easily, but still get you some, some gloves. It just eliminates that risk. Um, and it's a good practice to keep doing it and keeps your hands nice and clean. Um, and you don't transfer any of you, your your natural sweats onto your, your materials. So, righty, let's get into it. Alrighty guys, uh, almost finished. Uh, we've just got to finish off the uh, top of the shoulders now. Um, unfortunately I ran out of battery, which is uh, not too bad. It's seen me through through most of this, which is pretty decent. Um, what we've got to do now is, uh, once we finish off the colouring, we're going to switch back from the 9905 back over to the 105, the smaller burr, and going to go over those um, initial lines, and just to tighten up and really make those lines nice and crisp and clean, and finish off the portrait. Um, and then that will be ready for, for wrapping. Um, I'm going to let the Dremel charge for say 15-20 minutes and that should give us enough juice to finish off the piece and then I'll see you guys at the end of the video. And there you go guys, all done. Pretty much done in an afternoon. The only drawback is the battery life on the Dremel light, which is not too bad. But it obviously I'm very used to the Dremel 4000 and having power on tap. So um, that kind of slowed me down a little bit. So I had to stop several times and charge the battery a little bit and then ca crack on because I only have the single day. I don't want to film it over several days. Uh, I want to get it filmed in one day and get it all done. But um, 
Apart from that, it is a very versatile tool, very useful. Chuck it in your toolbox if you want to use um, it on smaller projects. It is easily capable of doing that. And for those beginners out there who are looking to get into engraving or using this tool for smaller tasks, then absolutely go right ahead. Um, it's definitely the tool for the job. Um, if you're looking at larger projects, then you want to look at maybe a Dremel 3000 or 4000 and that sort of um, side of things. But overall, pretty impressed and we pretty much completed this project. So hopefully my son will be happy with this one that he'll be getting for Christmas. So if you guys have any questions or comments, let us know down below. If you like the video, hit that thumbs up. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe. It really helps that channel grow. So thank you very much and I'll see you guys in the next one. <laughs>